Mars has always fascinated us with its similarity to Earth. NASA and several other private organizations are working tirelessly to make human settlement on Mars a possibility. Hello space lovers, welcome back to our channel. In this video, we are going to explore the possibility of a human colony on Mars. Is it possible for humans to live and survive on the red planet? What problems would we need to overcome? And should we even try? Nowadays, it seems like Mars is on everyone's mind. NASA hopes to send people to Mars by the year 2030, and SpaceX is aiming to bring people there by the year 2024. The journey to Mars is only the beginning. Once there, when Earth and Mars are most closely spaced, the journey will still take 210 days to reach on Mars. Landing on Mars is very challenging because it is too far away from Earth for any descent to be controlled remotely. An average radio signal travels that distance in 12 minutes. Everything must be pre-programmed. Any human trip to Mars will face physical challenges due to the living conditions there. Only 1% of Earth's atmospheric density may be found in Mars' thin atmosphere, which is basically entirely made up of carbon dioxide. Mars' atmosphere is too thin for handling dramatic daily changes due to its average distance from the sun of 80 million kilometers. High summer temperatures may reach to a pleasant 21 degrees Celsius, yet that same day, just before dawn, will have seen values of minus 90 degrees Celsius. Temperatures can drop so low that they completely freeze the atmosphere's carbon dioxide. A great bonus will be the additional insulation that Martian soil will provide. Both planets have ice caps, but the ice on each one has different elements. Ice on Earth is made up only of water, while on Mars, ice is a combination of water and carbon dioxide. Mars' surface is rock and dust, while Earth's surface is 70% water. Also, radiation, a long-term concern, will be lessened. The Sun constantly emits high-energy light in the form of gamma and X-rays as well as charged particles. We are shielded from the solar wind surrounding us on Earth, and to a lesser extent on the Moon thanks to the planet's strong magnetic field, which reaches into space. While the circumstances on Mars' surface are life-threatening, the absence of a magnetic field there causes radiation damage to accrue 10 to 20 times more quickly than it would on Earth. A number of other problems regarding possible bone and muscle deterioration in such an environment are raised by the fact that the gravity on the red planet is just 38% as powerful as that on Earth. The soil and terrain in the area present additional difficulties. Regolith, a toxic rock dust, is visible in soil that otherwise has the minerals needed to support plant growth. On the plus side, we may avoid bringing water if we choose our landing place wisely. There is nothing we can do to make water lighter. It is already very heavy. The astronauts will still need a certain amount of extra water, even with the finest recycling facilities. However, there are many locations on Mars where water, in the form of ice, is simply a component of the soil. Low atmospheric pressure prevents flowing water, but Mars does contain ice cap poles that can melt to produce water reserves. We can use that water for a variety of purposes rather than just for drinking. Moreover, Mars is a planet with many beneficial resources and distinct threats. Without advanced protective gear and life support systems, it would be impossible for people to breathe or endure the radiation or cold of the red planet, much less sustain life. The body of a person can be completely destroyed by the environment and gravitational forces alone. If numerous unmanned flights to Mars involve autonomous robots constructing necessary infrastructure before human residents arrive, each of these challenges can be partially overcome through technology. It is difficult to construct homes on Mars. Construction supplies might be too expensive to get to Mars. Therefore, researchers suggest that building materials for dwellings could come from Mars. Homes on Mars would need to resist the environment, which includes radiation, temperature changes, a lack of oxygen, and other factors. And new environments necessitate the use of different structures. Humans may exist underground or in ice igloos. 
Additionally, numerous designers have produced above-the-surface habitats that meet the required criteria. Farming on Mars will differ from what we do here on Earth. It would be necessary to grow crops artificially, such as through aquaculture or tank farming. Here, crops would be cultivated in nutrient-rich water and nourished by artificial lighting. Oxygen is essential for human life. The Earth contributes greatly to our atmosphere. The lack of oxygen is thus one of the main problems associated with human habitation of the planet. Compared to Earth, Mars has thinner air. Because oxygen makes up 21% of the air on Earth, it is the perfect environment for human life. However, oxygen only makes just 0.13% of the air on Mars. Most of it is carbon dioxide, which is bad for people. MOXIE, a NASA experiment that would convert CO2 to oxygen on Mars, has been tested. This opens the door to more extensive research and the potential for Mars air. But even if we were able to accomplish all of this, are we certain that it would be the right thing to do? Time will tell whether today's Mars enthusiasts are still dreamers, or if we will actually pull off the greatest achievement in our species history. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new about Mars. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating space-related content. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.